Good morning. <clears throat> Nine o'clock, Monday, May 6th, 2024. Monday. Here it's a Monday. Yeehaw. <laughs> Boy, good to see you. Hope you're feeling okay today. Does the uh, wind mess with your arthritis? I'm curious if like weather changes and stuff like that. Susan, good to see you on here. Hope you're feeling okay, okay today. <clears throat> God's going to walk with you guys through your illnesses and help you and use you during that. And uh, just remember what he told Isaiah. I called you through the furnace of affliction. And I don't always like to hear that, but... <clears throat> Sometimes that is what he does, but uh, good morning, Lynette. I know you're having some uh, issues also. Um, <clears throat> praying for Lynette and her back. I'm going to have that surgery soon. Uh, Jan, uh, praying for you guys. And uh, <clears throat> praying for you, hubby. <clears throat> I would ask that you pray for a friend of mine uh, in Missouri uh, they uh, were our neighbors growing up, uh, Scott and Linda Wilson, their uh, mom and dad, uh, Kenneth and Sarah Wilson. They um, have lived up there, still live there, and uh, Kenneth is, uh, looks like um, he doesn't have too many more days to live, and so I would ask that you pray for uh, Sarah and Kenneth and Scott and Linda. Uh, Scott was, Scott is, uh, still lives in that area. So does Linda. Scott is, uh, three days older than me and we would ride to school together. We grew up together. We'd go down to the Creek together and, um, they actually <clears throat> put up the hay on the 80 acres that I have back there. And, uh, just, um, through the years has been a really has grown into a good relationship. I, Scott came out several years ago and I took him elk hunting and uh, he killed his first elk. And so just really some good things that with them and, and, uh, but pray for them, <clears throat> pray for Sarah during this time. I, I know that they would all appreciate that. So, um, also, Trying to think uh, anything else. I know Chad Strange is having surgery tomorrow. Uh, carpal, carpal tunnel surgery on his hand. So pray for him. He'll be out of work there for a while, I know. And uh, so there are those things. Um, I, I, don't, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Quam tomorrow is our... Skating party, that's always fun, and uh, looking forward to that, uh, and uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I was reading the news, not a uh, whole lot on there, Betty uh, Washburn, um, Ray Larson, I ought to know Ray Larson somewhere, uh, I shouldn't, I, I, I'm certain <clears throat> that I should know him, I just for some reason can't put my mind to where, where I met him, but pray for uh, Betty's family. Ray Larson has passed away, and uh, just a lot of things there that um, <clears throat> we need to pray for and keep praying for one another, and don't stop doing that, and ah, yep, that's where it was, Betty. Yep, uh, yep, all right. I know now, so... We had a great day yesterday at church, uh, missing a few of our regulars, and that's you know normal, that happens, but I uh, hope they're not sick, um, and uh, we'll be back next week, We, uh, but it was a great service uh, all around, <clears throat> good spirit with the people, we had a great offering for the, the camp, uh, our camp fund now sets at a little over 21000 in in the camp fund. Um, like I told you, uh, it we're, we don't have a set number uh, exact yet because we don't know exactly how many kids are going. We 
Bad thing is, sometimes we have kids sign up just a few days before time to go. <laughs> so we don't know the exact amount, but we're guessing if with the price increase, with uh, if we have the average number that we had last year, right around 60 go, then we're we're probably somewhere around 27, 28,000 to get them all to camp. So. But we're at 21,000 already, so you guys, uh, our church family, just awesome when it comes to uh, the vision of uh, working, you know, getting these kids to camp, and uh, we really do appreciate the generosity of our church family, and it's because of that, too, that uh, we just have so many uh, ministries that we're able to do that do make an impact in this community, and because you're not just generous with your with your giving and your money, but you're very generous with your time. And that's, uh, can I tell you, it really is probably more important even than your money. And uh, I know the money, you got to pay your bills and those kinds of things, but uh, God takes care of that one way or the other. <clears throat> if you're doing things to honor him, then he'll, he'll, he takes care of that. When he's in it, he'll take care of it. But... He really does want you to serve him with a with a pure heart and, and uh, right motivations. And when you do that, God just blesses in great ways, and he is. And I, I'm just excited. I'm excited, too, about this week coming. We have our Mother's Day. We have uh, uh, baby dedication. Or I, I just, I, I know I'm a little weird on that, I guess, but I call it family dedication uh, because it's really... It's a commitment with the adults saying that we are going to raise our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We're making this a public declaration, and we want to be uh, uh, held accountable by our church family to to hold us to that standard. And so, and that's what we do. And and I'm excited for our young couples. And and uh, I just uh, uh, Trista, I won't say it on here, Trista Cobley, but. Uh, maybe sometime Chris can, if if it's okay, uh, he can tell us some of the things going on in, in your lives, you know. the But our young couples are so encouraging to me. And uh, I, I think uh, my generation, generation before me, um, we got pretty lax on things and got pretty soft. And, and things were pretty soft in, in our days. And for the most part, the generation before me, maybe not quite as much. We have the, you, you had the Vietnam War uh, and uh, those kinds of things that, a little bit of a challenge. We had the Persian War, but really uh, it's just been pretty soft. The economy's been pretty good. Uh, we had, you know, a couple of crashes there a little bit, but really things have been pretty soft. We got soft, got soft on our kids, got the believe in the lie that we have to uh, educate our kids in the uh, public institutions that are all they are are uh, indoctrination stations in the colleges today and <clears throat> so many of us in my generation believed that lie and and went down that road and and uh, but I'm telling you our kids are stepping up and and uh that next generation, I, I am just uh, truly thankful for them and what they're doing and the stands they're taking and and uh, the the way that they're giving their lives to to uh, uh, to God and and even the even the that I'm you know our church we have four generations now represented the one before me my generation our kids and now our grandkids and so it's pretty awesome and and our kids are. You know, and I'm not just, I'm not talking personally, just my kids. I'm including all of us that are in my age group, you know, that uh, we're just seeing some really good things come and, and uh, with those guys. And, and it's encouraging. It, it really is. And there is, I, can I tell you, there is hope for America. And there there is all kinds of hope for Christianity. And we still, we are still on the victor side here, guys, and don't ever forget that. And God's got things under control, and God's going to take care of it. And we just need to keep living for Him and trusting Him. And I, I don't, 
the, these politicians, they can try to wreak havoc all they want, but there's going to come a day when God's going to say enough is enough, and, and we'll know that. And But we better just stay busy keeping our nose clean and, and doing the things that we're supposed to do, right? So <clears throat> a couple of things I was reading in Judges and uh, <clears throat> and in verse uh, chapter 18, first of all, just quickly, this is my devotions, my problems, right? And, and uh, you're right, Todd. I mean, it's Looney Tune University out there and there are, there are good uh, Christian colleges out there. Someone does have where they truly need a degree, there are good Christian colleges out there that can give them the degree and the training that they need, and you just don't have to go. And most of those colleges are probably a third of the price or even a fourth of the price of these uh, loony institutions. Uh, and But I was reading in Judges 18, and, and there was a man that uh, he, he became a priest for hire, and, and Micah hired him as a priest, and he was a priest there, and then, then it shows us that uh, the uh, a bigger group came along and said that, uh, hey, we, we want you to um, come and be our priest, and we'll pay you more, we'll take care of you, and the, and the priest's heart was glad. He took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people, and, and so... He took it all because of the fame and the fortune. And I, I'm just, I, I was reading this this weekend, right? And it and there were times when, when I was uh, not content with where we were. And I always thought, you know, I just really wanted, I, I just, I wanted, I wanted to pastor a bigger church. I wanted to you know, have the challenges of more people. And I, I wanted those things in my life. And, and, uh, really God wasn't much in that at that time. And, and, uh, we looked at some churches and, and looked at one in Idaho and, and my kids, my family all thought we were moving on that one. And, you know, and I, I look back at that and I, I guess if there's any kind of regret, there's a regret that I had that, I just kept my kids wondering all the time, are we staying? Are we going? What are we doing? And just always some unrest there. And, um, but in, it was somewhere around 2013, I think it was, it was, it was 2012, 2012. I, I know now that it was during that time where I just said, all right, God, I'm, I'm right here. I don't want to go anywhere. If I, uh, die here, um, and this is the only ministry that I'm ever part of now from now on. That's okay. I, I want to, I just want to be where you want me to be. And can I tell you that when, when we did that, that that's when God said, okay, now I can give you some of those things that you want. And, and, and now I do want those things, but I don't want it for the same reason. I, I it's all about God's glory and it's about reaching other people and, and reaching more people with the gospel and watching them grow and, and watching them. Uh, we, had a, we had a gentleman yesterday uh, in his early 40s that I've known him for 20 years. And uh, uh, he, he uh, came yesterday and he's been coming faithfully now for several weeks. And yesterday he came up after the service crying. He said, uh, Pastor, I got to get things right. And he trusted Christ yesterday as his savior. I'm telling you, there is nothing better than watching someone, I don't care who it is, uh, call on Jesus to save them and, and Jesus saves them. Uh, nothing better than that. And, and, uh, if I'd have packed up and left, where would we, where would we be in my family? I mean, I, I don't know. I just so thankful that, that we stayed and, and you didn't, you know, you, you just don't make a decision based on size. You don't make decisions based on money. You, you just make your decision. And can I tell you, if, if that's for me as a pastor, can I tell you, it's, that's for you also. Don't always just take jobs because it's more money or, you, you, or move somewhere because the job is moving you, okay? That, I, I just don't agree with that at all. You move when God wants you to move. You, and you stay until God makes it very evident that he wants you to go somewhere else. And, and, uh, and, and 
go through and wade through the, the muck and the mud and the water and, and all of that. And God can bless you just like he has me. And, and, uh, and just keep after it, okay? And then I, I was also reading in chapter 18, and, and a lot of stuff today, but uh, in chapter 18, 27, and, and it tells us that uh, the children of Dan went their way, verse 26, and when Micah saw they were too strong for him, he turned and went back into his house. And they took the things which Micah had made and the priests which he had and came unto Laish and to a people that were at a quiet, that were at quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon and they had no business with any man. Can I, can I tell you something? You're, you're not an island of yourself. And you're not some lone wolf that, that you, you're not John the Baptist, okay? Just like Jesus, there's not another John the Baptist. And God has called us to be a part of a local church family. I'm, I'm telling you, when, when you go off by yourself, like what these guys did, this city was all by themselves and they didn't do business with anyone. They're like, we're secure, we're safe, we're happy in ourselves and and, and we're going to be okay, and we don't need anybody. Well, when it came time they needed somebody, there was nobody. <laughs> and you know, some you know, we we have in our society today, trying to to convince people to dig their holes and live underground, and uh, the preppers or whatever you want to call them, and and preparing for doomsday, you know what? Let, let Zuckerberg do that, all right? Let Bezos do that because they're going to go through the tribulation period and, and they're going to crawl down in their holes there. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to be living in that fine little plush hole in the ground. And you know what they're going to be doing? Begging God to kill them. And he's not going to. I'm, I'm telling you, best thing, best thing we can do, guys, in this crazy world today is stand for Jesus, tell people about Jesus, and bring as many people to heaven with you as you possibly can. And just keep living for him and quit letting the the wackadoodles get a hold of you and, and convince you that, that uh, uh, you know, it's the end of the world and we might as well just give up. No, we're not. We're not going to give up. We're just going to keep preaching the gospel, loving people, telling them about Jesus and living for Jesus and raising our children and watching our grandchildren grow and and you guys that have those little kids you just stay after it yeah i'm telling you you guys are doing a great job and and i am thrilled to be uh, a pastor of so many young couples that are uh looking up and and doing the right thing for their family and their and their lives and i'm more of our ladies in our churches are are staying home and and taking care of their kids that's your ministry Praise the Lord for that. God will pay you for that. <laughs> He'll take care of it. Your kids need you. Your husband needs you. Your family needs you. And praise the Lord for that. And just stay after it. And then, so those things uh, were, th those were actually just weekend thoughts. And then I got into Ruth and was reading this. And, and here's some advice you can give your kids, all right? Especially like teenagers, what do you look for when, when you start looking for someone that, that you think you could spend your life with? Well, use Ruth, all right? Use her uh, as an example. It really would be a good idea. And here it says in Ruth chapter 2, in verse, verse 9, Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they sh uh, shall not touch thee? And when thou art a thirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. So we have Boaz telling this to Ruth. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why? Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me, all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy, thy nativity, and are coming to a people which thou knewest not heretofore. Can, can I say, 
here's some things to look at, all right? You, when, when you're looking at people and, and you're looking at, if it's a young man and you're, and you're praying uh, God would, would bring you a, a, a young lady into your life that could be your, your wife, and uh, look at some of the qualities that, that Ruth had here. And uh, she, she was loyal. I mean, she was loyal to her mother-in-law, right? And there ought to be some loyalty in that girl, some loyalty to some of her friends, definitely loyalty to her family, loyalty to God. I mean, you can tell if someone is loyal or not. Just watch them for a while. And and, and so there's a, a loyalty there. She was brave. She packed up, left her mom and dad, followed followed her husband wherever he wanted to go. There she was. She was right there with them. And if you got, I'm sorry, but... If somebody is is too in love with their family and unwilling to follow their spouse, if if it's a woman that is too much in love with her with her family that she's not willing to follow her husband, I'm telling you, it's not going to be pleasant. You're all, the guy is always going to play second place in that situation, and that and that marriage is is going to struggle. And parents, can I tell you, when your kids get married, butt out, just butt out. Do your you know, bite your bite your tongue and and keep your opinions to yourself unless they ask for advice. Right now, if if you see them really doing something stupid and ungodly, yes, you you have a responsibility there, not only as a parent but as a, as another believer, and and talk to them about it. But I'm telling you, just she was brave and and she packed up and left. She was a hard worker. I mean, she wasn't afraid to work and. She worked to to provide a, a living for her and her mother in law. She was a one that stepped up, did what she had to do. And, and uh, uh, you you look in Proverbs thirty one the uh, the the wife there you you can call her the stay at home mom. And and I don't look down on that at all, guys. Uh, but she was still busy, and not just raising her children, but providing for them in ways that she can and. and um, look at those things and, and pay attention to that. And then in chapter three and, 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 uh, verse 11, and now my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest for all the city of my, oh, let me see it. Yeah. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And so they knew she was faithful in, in uh, I guess in, in verse 12 of, uh, uh, Chapter two, he said, "The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given of thee, given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust." So she trusted God. She was full of faith. She was full of virtue, uh, goodness, godliness, faithfulness, moral. I mean, all of those things. Watch for those things. And, and you know, we we looked a couple of weeks ago at at vanity and and. Uh, uh, guys, be careful. Sometimes girls can cover up a deformed soul by putting on a lot of makeup and making themselves look really pretty. And uh, you find out the heart is grievously black. And guys, the same way. You know, ladies, these are things you can look for in, a men, in men too. Loyalty, brave, hardworking, full of faith, virtuous in their behavior. Uh, so there's a lot in the Bible that we can learn from and, and use in our own lives. And and apply them, and and uh, but can I also tell you some things that when I read through Ruth, it, it's just a reminder that you just need to know that God will walk through whatever it is that you're going through, and and, and He'll be there for you if you know Him as your Savior. Then you have been put in a privileged position. You are in the child. You you are a child of God. You're in the family of God. And God is your father. And when he's your father, can I tell you, he'll take care of things. And he'll take care of you. Doesn't necessarily mean everything will always be easy. But he'll always be there. And he'll be walking with you through this and saying, you come with me. You follow me. You cling to me. And you're going to be stronger when you get through these things. And in Psalm 105, it says this in 17. Uh, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron. So they beat him, right? And they chained him up. And after he was sold by his brothers, until the time that his word came, word of the Lord tried him. 
The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler uh, of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. You see, God walked through some hard times with Joseph and he hung on there. And we see how how wonderfully used Joseph was for God in his glory. And so we can we can face whatever comes and we can face it courageously. Look in Proverbs 14, 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. So I'm just telling you that God's got you, and so what do you do? Well, you just believe what God says, right? You, you trust what God says. You walk according to what God's word says. You, you see things in that, that God corrects in your life and, and shows you that you need to change some things in your life. You know what you do? You believe him, you trust him, and you, and you turn and, and change those things in your life that you need to change. And when you do that, as, as a godly individual, God blesses that. And as a child of God, as your father, he'll walk you through whatever it takes. But it takes trust and faith in him. It starts with salvation, and then as a disciple... You trust him. And it's always about believing. Can I tell you that? In, in John 4, 47, it says, When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him, besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Jesus said unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. You know, he didn't even, he, he didn't even uh, try to... Uh, argue with Jesus. He said, Hey, I know, I know. I don't care about the signs. I know what I've heard. I know what I've seen and I'm not here to look for other signs. I just know that you can heal my son. Jesus saith unto him, go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. He believed him and he went his way. Didn't argue, didn't plead anymore. He just, he knew that he believed that God would do what God said he would do. And then they go down, they find out that he healed him at the very uh, time that Jesus had told the man that he had been healed. And, and it says that uh, thy son liveth and himself believed and his whole house. Let, let your house, let your home, let your family be a family of faith, trusting God, doing what God says and Put him to the test, guys. Just put him to the test and step out, walk with him. First of all, know for certain that you've trusted him as your savior and then just trust him for everything. And when he shows you stuff in the Bible, believe what he says and do it. That's it. Just go do it. And you'll find that God will be sufficient in everything. And so it's just uh, powerful. So some good devotions this weekend, great devotion this morning, and uh, I'm, I'm just thankful for every one of you, and uh, thankful for our church family, just staying in there, and uh, um, you guys, uh, those, young, those young families, you guys are such an encouragement to me, and uh, truly thankful for you, and so it's Monday, it's Monday's, Monday's musings, so it's been a good day already, beautiful day. Wind could really stop blowing. That would really be a help, you know? But uh, other than that, it's all right. So uh, God bless you guys. Hey, pray for each other. Pray for Guy Gould. Yesterday was a pretty hard day. Uh, you guys uh, understand that's lost your, lost your uh, partner, that um, these are hard days. So you pray for Guy. I know he would appreciate that. Uh, send him a text if you can or whatever. Call him. Encourage him. And uh, let's just get out there and let's do something good for God today. God bless you guys. Have a good day.